They took away the green grass in Shattered Savannas? Really? And the answer is yes. In 1.19.40, which released this week, Shattered Savannas used, went from being beautiful and green and lush like this, to being more like savannas and kind of dull like this. On the surface, it seems like a mystery why they did this, because they always are working towards parity, but the biggest things that people want, like map markers, or banners on shields, or uh, you know, dual wielding, or faster health regeneration, or custom super flat or amplified, those are all things people want that take a lot of time, whereas all this required was removing some code from Bedrock which allowed the exclusive feature to exist. However, I think the parity team, obviously their goal is to bring Bedrock and Java Minecraft closer together, but they shouldn't just be doing it blindly by removing features from one version of the game. And let's be honest, when I say one version of the game, I mean Bedrock. If you look at building on top of the roof on the Never, uh, this is something that is technically a bug for Java, but they won't fix it there, and they won't add it to Bedrock, effectively giving Java exclusive features alongside Redstone and whatnot. But I think rather than just blindly saying, how do we make the two versions of the game closer together, because that seems to delay updates, that seems to cause all sorts of weird decisions, work out how you can make the best unified version of Minecraft possible. Of course, it's a really important goal to bring the two Minecrafts closer together, but we shouldn't do so by just sacrificing features from each version of the game. That doesn't make anything better, that just makes everything worse, in my opinion. And I think we need more people to advocate for Bedrock and say, wait, 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 people liked that feature, why are we removing it? Just add it to Java instead! That would have been the simple solution that made Java players happier, but instead we've got a system that is kind of like hearing that the murder rate in uh, certain cities is way lower than in others, and thinking, how do we up the murder rate in those places? It's like, no, 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 let's bring it down. If we know it can be better, why don't we aim for that? I don't know. Anyway, so if you're curious about Bedrock, by the way, you might be questioning why there is an extra digit in Bedrock update numbers, because instead of 1.19.4, you might have noticed I referenced 1.19. 1.19.40, and indeed 1.19.2 for Java was 1.19.20, and the official reason is just that, yeah, it's a way to distinguish the two version numbers. There won't ever be confusion about when 1.19.40 is coming to Java, mostly because they've already got terrible shattered savannah grass, am I right? But it also has a zero at the end, which makes you sure that it is a bedrock-only update. Although there are some bedrock updates without the zero, and there are some Java updates which inevitably will hit zero if they release 10 uh, minor versions, uh, that's something that mostly doesn't happen happen, and so update names are very different between Bedrock and Java, something which is deliberately done. Just uh, like deliberately, they chose to add a new type of tree to the game in 1.18, but the Azalea tree didn't get its own wood texture, instead it uses the oak tree. And this is always something that I found kind of weird. I think that if Minecraft is looking for new ways to add new woods to the game, we don't even need entirely new trees. Like we're seeing with bamboo wood, taking an existing block and turning into something new is a really cool way to add new features to existing worlds, and one of the great ways they could do that is by adding this azalea wood right here. And I think the cool thing about this is if they really want to argue that oak wood and azalea wood are just so similar in the real world, they have to be the same exact item in game, why not have a similar texture on the outside, but then it looks different on the inside? This could be used for all sorts of weird creative things, and also a green wood block palette would be really, really cool for making, you know, fences instead. And just, I think that Minecraft adding new colors is a great way to add creativity, or to put this in 1.20 words, self-expression and story storytelling, which as we all know, are the theme of this update internally so far. And so when people look at the update so far, like the latest snapshot on beta, which has a weird line in there about camels uh, continuing to jump until they hit land or water, you might have a question like Alicia Cardella, who says, wait, if camels can dash over any gap before hitting land, can a camel jump over the end void? Well, I mean, there's only one way to be absolutely sure, and that way does involve a little bit of camel abuse, so let's see what happens. Okay. Not not what you're expecting, probably, because the bomb of the world does count as a block, it seems like. Also, you die when you get here. Mostly. I mean, it's always good to ask questions, though, just like Caden Hollers, which is when are Bedrock snapshots coming out? So you'll hear a lot of Minecraft news focus on snapshots, because a lot of things do come to Java first, but there is a Bedrock equivalent, it's called Betas and Previews, and last year they tended to come out a day or so before or after the snapshot, this year they seem to be coming out the same day, just a couple of hours later, and so next week we can expect another Bedrock Beta or Preview. Doing one nearly every single week, like the Java snapshots, means there's gonna be a lot of them that are filled with relatively 
relatively minor changes. I mean, this week, the biggest one you could argue is the new Camel Walk, and, you know, it, it's mostly about changing the creative menu on Java. So what will happen with future snapshots? Every week, I guess we'll have to kind of find out what exactly is in sight. There is big stuff yet to come, but we have no idea when or how or what it is and when we can get our hands on it, but I'll let you know as soon as those are snapshots slash bedrock betas and previews release. But anyway, the next question comes in from Jad60AJ, who says, not really a 1.20 question, but when is the Toy Cat Shorts face revealing? And uh, yeah, there's been so much hype around face reveals recently. I've wanted to get in on this for so long. How do I get people excited to see my face? And the answer is sadly, it's already out there, which means I'm gonna have to do a face unreveal. That's right, the face is officially vanishing now. You have no idea what I look like anymore. Wow, you want to make fun of my nose or my hair? You can't do it because you have no clue what it's like. I could be uh, the most ugly or handsome person in the world under here and you'd never have any idea. So, uh, yeah, w w when is the... Uh, by the way, the Twicat Shorts channel, I want to quickly reference... Uh, they they're referencing a channel you might not know. I've been playing around with shorts on this channel right here. Uh, you can give it a Google, Twicat Shorts, and it might come up, or maybe it won't. Um, I, I mostly avoided uploading shorts to this channel. Maybe I'll give that a little bit of a change. Uh, but I mostly am going to be posting over on Toy Cat Shorts, which I think is like the fifth channel in the Empire at this point. I, I might even just merge it with the stream highlights. So if you want to subscribe to the whole Toy Cat Empire, there's now five channels. Isn't that fun? Speaking of fun things, um, the next question comes in from every, uh, sorry, Jordan uh, Winters. I have no idea how I got everything from that. But um, they say, is the end update anywhere on the horizon, do you think? This is actually a pretty fun question in my opinion because the end update is something we all wanted you know, it, it was one of the major expectations or one of the hopes for 1.20 and so now we know 1.20 isn't the end update are we going to be seeing it anytime soon but here's the thing uh, you know because a lot of people have that narrative but I think there's a tiny possibility because right now we don't have the name of the update right we just have the theme which is creativity self-expression and you know like narrative building whatever uh, you could technically do that with an end update hit hear me out here so as well is updating these things in the overworld if you added some things to the end like you know let's say because uh, because right now if you look at minecraft the overworld and the nether have a really good tie to each other and a good story even the end dimension the the place where the dragon edge is actually uh, really well slotted into the rest of the game i i think the uh, the end poem is a beautiful thing however the end islands don't really fit narratively speaking into the rest of this and so what could minecraft do wow that's a good question i think they could update the end i think that's it's actually quite unrealistic. I do worry that it isn't anywhere too close on the horizon. The reason most people want an end update is because Minecraft have said we're not going to add new dimensions till we've properly updated the existing dimensions. And so we're seeing overworld updates, we're seeing never updates, but we haven't really seen them do much of the end. And so that's why a lot of people are excited in that front. Uh, will it be happening? I can't tell you. All I can say is that the next comment comes in from Uchaki, who says, hey, but by the way, these are on Twitter. Follow me at IBX Toycat if you want to see the other half of the uh, YouTube game. You want to see the things between the videos. Uh, but they say, how would hoppers and dispensers work with chiseled bookshelves? And this is the funny thing. Right now, you might assume, like, how does this work? The answer is it doesn't. Uh, chiseled bookshelves, despite logically being a redstone component, even being shown as having redstone comparators, you can't use them with dispensers or with hoppers just yet, which seems kind of strange to me. Uh, honestly, there's a lot of things that seem like they should be in the features so far in 1.20, but probably aren't. I've been actually working on, like, a huge list maybe I'll put that together for a video, of just things that I think that so far seem like they would fit in this update. But anyway, the next question comes in from Gas Powered Pick, who says, what is the dumbest question you've ever gotten in a Q&A? Without a doubt, it has to be this one right here. I mean, come on, what is that as a question? Now, I, the, the one that is actually the worst is when people ask me a question I just answered in the Q&A they were watching, and it's like, if you weren't, if you weren't watching this Q&A, what hopes do you have of me answering your question next time? Or do you think that the best way to get your question answered is to ask a question that's already been answered? Because I already, uh, you, you know I can definitely give you the answer. Unlike, you know, this one from Hello Deep Sing, who says, how long till we see you go on another trip? In case you're curious, uh, I am, uh, my, by the time I record the next Q&A, I'll be in another country. Uh, but I did do a world-breaking first. It required a bit of traveling, but I beat Minecraft in the most unique location you might ever hear about. Uh, however, you might not be seeing it for another week. We're going to put some time to edit it together. Uh, it's a fun little bit of a trip trip video that involves me doing something I believe no person has ever done, probably honestly with any video game ever, but I'm 100% sure non's beaten Minecraft the way that I did it. It's a, it's a fun little journey uh, across 
uh, the, the, the country I live in and even outside of it. But I'll, I'll show you that uh, sometime in the near future when it's edited together. But um, yeah, I hope that's not too much of a teaser. If it is, then maybe you'll like 1.20. It's the update where we still don't quite know, uh, like, you know, like the scope or the theme or the release date. We just know uh, that it is set around uh, some key principles. And that is something that does give me some excitement. Like I say, I feel as though... Uh, every single week, we don't know if a snapshot's going to be minor things or if it's going to be big things. And maybe that curiosity, that excitement, is the goal that they want. I don't know for sure. All I know is that I hope you all enjoyed this video. And uh, I look forward to not seeing you in the next time. Because, wow, I'm still mysterious and, and hidden over here. Whoa. No, I've got to go to Ikea now. So, uh, have a good day. I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, wait, I'll see you for the live stream later. I'm playing. We hit 900 members, so I'm uh, playing Medium Salmon Edition. That'll be fun. Okay, goodbye.